When I was younger, my mom always used to tell me this story about while she was pregnant with me. She used to play Super Mario Brothers on the NES, the first one, and I would dance like crazy in her belly. I love this story because not only is it kind of cute and funny, but I also feel like it influenced my life more than any story I've ever been told. Throughout my entire life, Nintendo has been a mainstay in a number of important events. From when I was born until I was about six, the NES was all we had, and the only game we had was Super Mario Brothers with Duck Hunt. I played the hell out of that thing, and my mom was always very patient. She helped me learn how it worked, and back then, games took longer to beat because they didn't hold your hand. There was no such thing as an online strategy guide, so playing the same game for years wasn't that unusual. When I was around five or six, my mom decided to get me a new game. So she went to the store and got me Super Mario World. Now, neither of us knew at the time, but the Super Nintendo was an entirely different console. She just saw Nintendo and Mario and bought it. It wasn't until she gave it to me and it didn't fit in my little NES that we realized something was up. Now, my dumb little kid brain was pretty upset because the high of getting my first new game had been squashed as quickly as it had been raised. So my mom decided the next day she was going to get me the new system because stores really weren't selling classic Nintendo games anymore. Now, the thing to know, at this time, my mom was not made of money. My parents had just separated and she was a single mother, living on her own, waiting tables, and hustling to keep us afloat. So the fact that she found the money to get me a brand new video game system is incredible. I have no idea the sacrifices she had to make to get it, but she did what she had to do. I was going week for week between my parents' houses, and at my dad's, I didn't really have any video games, until one day he took me to Toys R Us, and he decided to buy the brand spanking new Nintendo 64, and a copy of Mario 64. It was incredible. I had never seen graphics that good. But I was a dumb little kid. The concept of Mario jumping into the paintings was totally lost on me. So I spent most of my time just running around Peach's castle trying to find things to do. I was running around the courtyard, climbing trees, swimming under the bridge, and I was totally content with that. But the next week, while I was at my mom's, my dad called me and told me he had figured out the secret. He said he had jumped into the painting in the castle and it transported him to this amazing sounding place with these little bomb guys and a mountain and he fought a huge bomb guy with a mustache. My little kid mind was blown and I couldn't wait to see it for myself. The fact that my dad was playing the game was kind of surprising because my dad didn't really mess with games. That was always my mom's thing. I guess he enjoyed it though, because he went and picked up Mario Kart 64 and two more controllers. He actually invited my mom inside one day to play a race the three of us when she was dropping me off. My parents had been split up for some time when this happened, so it was weird, but also really nice to see them coexist like this for my sake. Some time passed, both my parents got remarried to different people, and for the first time, I had some siblings to play with. I have a lot of memories from this time, like us sitting around watching our babysitter play through Paper Mario because we had difficulty sharing and would constantly criticize each other on how bad we were. It was easier for us all to just watch her play and give input. Eventually, the GameCube came out and my mom knew how badly I wanted one. My stepdad had bought one, but he let his son keep it in his room so I hardly ever got to play it. I mainly just played my Game Boy at this time because I was obsessed with Pokemon, like most kids my age. But I'll never forget coming home from school one day, and my mom had a GameCube just for me, the jet black one. She had waited in line at Best Buy for hours to get it. I loved that thing. I was renting a lot of games at the time, so I really got to try all kinds of stuff. A lot of it was really bad, but I had some pretty good experiences too, 
like Mario Sunshine, both Sonic Adventure games, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and The Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker. A few years later, everything would change. I lived in Louisiana all my life, and Hurricane Katrina was on its way. My dad had evacuated us to Texas for two weeks to wait out the storm. Fun fact, this is actually where I learned to play the Pokemon trading card game. Until that point, I was just collecting them. The people we were staying with didn't have internet or cable, but their son did have one of those learn to play VHS tapes. I watched that thing probably five or six times over the course of the two weeks. That tape and my Game Boy were the only things that kept me sane as we watched on the news how our home was being torn apart. My dad made the decision to move our family to Georgia because of the conditions in Louisiana. My only issue was that my mom was going to be staying in Louisiana, so 12-year-old me had to make an impossible choice of who to live with. I decided to move with my dad to Georgia, simply because of the conditions in the city. My mom was heartbroken, but she understood. The next chapter of my life had begun. I was in a new state, new school, new life. I was never the best at making friends, and my first year in Georgia was no exception. I spent a lot of time playing my GameCube and my DS that my grandmother got me for my birthday. This was around the time I had finally gotten my own computer too. So I spent a lot of time web surfing and reading all about the video game news coming out of Japan. One day, I was on my normal rounds and I read about something called the Nintendo Revolution. They later renamed it the Wii but that console became all I thought about. I was a kid obsessed. Seeing those early screenshots of Mario Galaxy was amazing to me. Luckily for me, since I never shut up about it, my family got the picture. My mother and grandmother had devised this long distance plan to get me one. I was gonna be visiting my mom for Christmas vacation and somehow my granny had bought the Wii through a coworker and was able to transport both me and the Wii without my knowledge to Louisiana so my mom could give it to me for Christmas. Needless to say, I was absolutely thrilled. I played The Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess and Wii Sports for the entire trip with my mom. When I got back to Georgia, I was toting around the Twilight Princess strategy guide with me everywhere at school. Every bit of downtime was spent reading that thing, so I was prepared for when I got home. It was actually because of this book then I met one of my future best friends. He noticed it in English class and started a conversation that would lead to a lifelong friendship. It was through this friend that I actually met Carl. The Wii kind of defined my high school years. Every day after school, me and my friends would go to my house and play Super Smash Bros. Brawl for hours. It became a ritual of sorts. My dad worked night shift, so my house was the ideal spot. We could just be ourselves. I got into a lot of trouble for having people over, but I would do it all again if I could. Sorry, Dad. These are some of the best days of my life, just beating each other up playing Smash Bros. My love for Nintendo continues to this day. Every time I play Mario Kart, I think of that day with my parents. Every time I play Smash Bros, I think of all the fond memories I had with my friends. Every time I play a new Mario game, I think about the time that my dad showed me how to do it when he didn't play video games at all. And heck, I wouldn't even have my first child if it weren't for the fact that somebody posted a picture of one of those old Pokemon Pokedexes on Facebook. Nintendo helped me through all of the low points in my life and gave reinforcement to all of the high points. And here I am, almost 30 years later, and every time I hear that music from the first Mario Brothers, I'm still dancing.